Hey everybody, we're going to cover redefine character sets and character sets in general. Um, I'm going to move rather quickly in order to keep this somewhat short. There's an important prerequisite to this discussion, which involves the I.O. section of the memory map and the ability to bank the character set memory in uh, for overwriting. Um, super basic will always obey your wishes as a super basic developer, meaning it controls um, memory location one, which controls the IO banking. Um, and it always checks to see what's there first before it makes a change. And that change will do things like look to see if there's anything depending from the disk device, um, do something with one of the graphics registers, for instance. Um, so you can pretty much step on that. There are some exceptions, but I'll go into this into depth in, a, in another video. Um, let's jump right to character sets and talk about what they're all about. Um, I'm sitting here at the boot screen or the startup screen of a, a Phoenix F256 Junior, not the K this time, this is the Junior. Everything I'm doing here is gonna work on the K as well. Um, so to start with, let's say that the character set in the F256 is 255 printable characters, um, 256 printable characters with the null or character zero. If you wanted to print a character on a screen, you would use print CHR dollar sign with a number, and I'll put a number in like six. Let's see what this says. Um, it doesn't do anything. Well, how come? Well, it might be a hidden uh, control code that may do something like change the color of the cursor or, um, or clear the screen, etc. I'm going to take a, a couple quick stabs at this. Ah, 56, 8. Okay, so that's printing out ASCII 56, which happens to be the number 8. If you know anything about the ASCII character set or the ASCII table, of characters, I'll put it up on the screen here with my prop, low budget prop number one. Uh, you'll see that it ranges from zero to 127, which in this case we're talking about standard ASCII, not extended ASCII. And you start with some uh, non printable uh, characters from zero up through 31. And these traditionally have a meaning, uh, it's kind of lost its value and meaning over time, unless you're from the uh, kind of old days and you still remember it well fondly. I do. Um, but you'll see some things on here that still hold true. For instance, a control H, which is um, a, a, a eight, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, yeah, is a backspace. So on most systems, if you hit control H, it's gonna go backspace on you. And there's a bunch of other that don't really do much these days. Of course, carriage return is still 13. Uh, line feed is still 10, which of course makes the, the, the cursor move down one character. So some of these still mean something depending on the system you're talking about, but it gets magical when you hit 32 and that's when you hit the printable character range and it starts with the space. It runs up through the special symbols that you see on your shifted number keys. Um, it goes up to the numbers themselves, the numerals. Then it goes to some of the, of, the, of the special symbols you'll see on other keys, usually to the right of the alpha, depending upon what region you live in. Um, and then you'll see the alphabet, which begins at 65, otherwise known as, as ASCII hexadecimal 41. The at sign is just prior to it, and then shifted 32 to the right, so you add 32 here and you get the lowercase. And ultimately it closes with equivalencies of uh, open square bracket, and now you're talking about the open curly bracket, a slash or a pipe, uh, etc. So that's a quick overview. And of course the Phoenix is an ASCII machine, not a, um, a, a Petsky machine, right? That's the Commodore ASCII. So I can expect things like if I put a 65 in here, hopefully I'll get a letter A. I do a capital letter A for that matter. If I put in a, um, I don't know, I'll put in something like 96 and see what I get. Ah, the tick mark, the, 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 the much, um, uh, what is it, ignored tick mark, which is um, on the keyboard actually, in the upper left of, the, of, of most PC type keyboards, next to the one is the tick mark. So anyway, enough background there. I also need to mention that there's a super basic command called cprint or character print, which is rather important. And what it'll do is it will ignore some of the special symbols. And I, be I believe, let me look, form feed is, what's form feed? Form feed is a 12. So watch this, if I print chr of 12, it's gonna clear the screen, okay? But if I cprint chr of 12, going to print a character. And this is one of the graphic characters in the built-in Phoenix character set. 
the F two five six character set specifically, because um, some of the other systems have different character sets. But it was kind of made standard on this line of F two five six systems. I'm going to quickly print a loop for X equals um, zero to two fifty five. C print chr dollar of X next. Actually, I'm going to put a semicolon here so it doesn't do a new line every time. Okay, there's the entire character set. So just to I left the cursor right where I where I ended with my last cursor the semicolon here, right? Um, so I will just quickly to to just want to double check something for you. I'm going to C print um, chr dollar of zero, and that's a null, so it showed nothing. I'm going to C print chr dollar of two fifty five. And that's the spade of the four suits in the, uh, you know, cards. All right. With that behind us, I'm going to um, do uh, two things. I'm going to load a character set into memory. Actually, I'm going to allocate memory. And then I'm going to load a character set into memory. And I have to explain to you that you're not going to see anything magical just yet. And I can't really promise magic. But let me uh, talk just a moment about super basic memory. In what was... Um, Section, uh, part four, in part four, we discussed memory and how super basic uses memory. And we explained that, and I don't recall the, the hexadecimal addresses, I'm really kind of bad at that, but uh, um, there's a section of memory, possibly from um, 2000 to possibly, I'm making this up, 3FFF, which contains some elements of your basic program once it's optimized and tokenized and stored in memory. Um, that could be considered a heap, H-E-A-P, in some languages, in that it's used kind of, it's variable storage, not a variable like the, like the letter or, the, or uh, you know, a variable called like count, but it's a variable space of storage that could be used for various things like putting tokens in there or putting constants in there, putting pointers in there, putting line numbers in there. So super basic uh, manages the space efficiently, but in addition, super basic allows you, the basic developer, to allocate or reserve certain parts of memory for your own use. And that's what we're gonna do here. We need a buffer to load this character set into off of disk. And the allocate command is called, you guessed it, alloc. And within alloc, you tell it how much memory you wanna allocate or cordon off. I'm gonna say 3K or 3072 bytes. It's gonna hand back to me kind of a pointer uh, to the starting location, 4097. And if you know uh, binary arithmetic, you may recognize that this is almost a magic number. Uh, 4096 is 1000 hexadecimal, okay? So what this is doing is it's basically saying, okay, here's 3K memory. It starts at 4096, um, have at it, or 4097, sorry, have at it. So the lower part of this is, is still reserved for the super basic. The upper part is being given to me. Um, next thing I'm gonna do is to take a, a um, a quick directory to have a look at our, the various files I have on this disk, including a couple um, of character set files. Good. And I've got a, a Commodore 128, I've got an Atari, a bunch of different ones. I'm gonna use this one here, which is called 901447-10.bin. And this is an old uh, pet character set, which is kind of the basic for um, for um, Petsky um, or CBM ASCII. Um, you know, this was invented by, I think, Leo Tremel, or Tremiel, which was Jack Tremiel's son who invented this character set. I think that was the son. He has two sons. Um, and you know what? I'll put a link below. There's a very nice article written about him and kind of his background, his education, and what he did for Commodore in the early days, including working with, uh, with you know, some of the legendary people at, at Commodore, um, Chuck Peddle specifically, to come up with this character set. Um, I already reserved my memory. 4097 is a magic number. I'm going to put that in here. I'm going to define two variables. A uh, from row, uh, I'm gonna say from zero, and a to row, I'm gonna say zero, and then I'm gonna uh, create a loop. Now, what's a row? Well, on the back of my uh, my prop here, I've got a picture of one of the Commodore character sets, and you can see here that it's rows of 32, eight rows of 32, or 256 characters total, and some of it's familiar, some of it may not be, and the order's kind of weird, but you're looking essentially at uh, lowercase characters, uppercase characters, special symbols, we discussed some of those, 
and then kind of the extended Petsky symbols intermixed here, including two lines of special Petsky symbols. And you'll notice the order is rather different than the Phoenix character set, and I mention it as an example. Here's the club card suit, here's the heart, here's the spade, and somewhere else is a diamond. Um, so I just wanted to mention that, that we're gonna be dealing with this data one row at a time, okay? So we're gonna be copying from and copying to using these two variables, and then we're gonna need a, a loop to copy from um, the memory where we were loading the character set um, into the hexadecimal C1000 range. And the C1000 range, again, is the IO area, or one of them that holds the character set. And if I went there right now and I tried to write random bytes over that character set, you'd see some interesting thing happen, things happen. I'm gonna do that just for fun. Um, let's start with, well, I'm not gonna do that for fun. We'll, we'll have fun later. All right, let me do this. So, let, let, let's write the loop. It's gonna be um, a for loop. For x equals zero to 255. I'm gonna poke, um, let's see. I wanna do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have an offset of 1K actually. I would say uh, print um, three zero, Nope, sorry, 4097, 4096 plus 1024. That's gonna be our magic starting point. Okay, good. I'm gonna poke C1000 plus, um, um, looks like uh, from row, no, sorry, to row times uh, 256 plus X is kind of an offset. And then what am I gonna poke? I'm gonna poke the peak of um, 5120 um, um, plus the same uh, from row times 256, the same formula anyway, plus X, close that parenthesis, and type next, and hope for the best. All right, good. Now I think that's gonna be right. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a for loop, um, 4Y equals zero to, 31 colon, it's pretty much what we did before. We're printing out the um, CHR dollar sign of Y, which is gonna print the first 31 characters. That's where we're gonna play with this. Because if we damage that character set, we'll at least be able to discern numbers, letters, and special symbols in our in our listing here, or in our directory at least. Uh, so I'm gonna print that to the screen, we'll put a semicolon, colon, next, and let's see what happens here. Good. We get the first 31 char 32 characters as we did before, except before we printed all 256 of them. Now, I need to load into memory the character set. Um, so I'm gonna do a B load, right? Binary load of um, this guy here, 901-447-10 dot bin uh, into uh, the magic numbers 5120. And I'll sit here and watch my light, access light blink, it's done. Okay, so load that into memory. And that character set's 2K, by the way. Um, and you can see it here, by the way, uh, eight blocks. Each block is about 256 bytes, 2K. So with that finished, I have one more very important thing to do, and that's to um, store in location one, um, the number one, which will tell the um, memory manager that I'd like to have access to the character set memory, not the general IO space, not the screen memory, not the color memory, again, more on this later. For now, just trust me. I'm gonna poke one comma one. Okay. Now I'm ready to, anything I write to the C1000 range is gonna write over what's there. So let's hope for the best. Um, I will tell you that there's actually two character sets in, in memory there. Phoenix has two character sets that you can choose from. So you can always revert to the other character set with one simple poke. We'll talk about that at the end. But let's do this copy. We're gonna go from zero to zero. Um, we're looking at zero here. We're going to go from the beginning to there. Now our first row is expected to be all capital letters. That's boring. I'm going to move straight ahead and go to the 0, 1, 2 for the second row. Let's see what happens here. I want the from row to be 2. And I'm going to hit enter here. And I got a syntax error. I always like to start with a syntax error. Let's see. Poke C1000 plus T row times 256 plus X comma peak. I, I bet it doesn't like the space here. I could be wrong. But let's see. 5, 1, 2, Open paren, close paren, yeah. Syntax error again. All right. It's only funny the first time. 4x 
equals 0 to 55 poke c thousand plus t rho times 256 plus x comma peak of 5120 plus oh i know what it is see what i wrote here from it's fro f-r-o-w from rho from's probably a reserved word there you go so notice at the bottom line here to see what happened it, it it just overrode it bit for bit um i'm gonna write the um write it don't worry i can't write it back because i stepped over it what i'm going to do is i'm going to write um some alpha alpha characters here i'll go i'll go to row zero and do it again i watch right here there you go and it, it did that because it's copying a lot of bytes right it's relatively slow it's copying 256 bytes worth of data um and i can draw for you on the screen what that looks like i'll i'll, I'll do that just for a moment to pause it and show you that and then we're going to quickly kind of close this one down with a, a couple of quick from two loops that it's gonna replace this character set with the pet character set. And I have to say that it's not that dramatic in terms of um, looking at this at the, at, the, at the actual symbols in the set, except for the Petsky set, which is a little bit obscure and a lot of the same characters exist. But one thing you'll notice is the M has a big block right in the middle there. See that square there? The normal character set doesn't have that. And you're not, not that impressive. You know what? I'm gonna do something crazy right now because I, I, I feel lucky. I'm gonna replace this character set with the C128 character set, because that's a much thicker character set. And uh, I'll be stepping over memory because it's rather large, but let's hope it doesn't crash and let's see what happens. Lights uh, red, okay, it's done now. Okay, that took about four times as long. It's much larger as a, of a file. I'm going to now uh, leave this as it was, zero, no, I'm gonna, sorry. I'm gonna go from two, as I started before, to zero and uh, two to zero. And I'm gonna run my loop, see what happens. There you go. So now you're seeing the fatter characters. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the alpha characters and you'll see what happens. This is gonna be a little bit uh, a little bit more exciting, I think. There you go. Now you'll notice the difference between the old school Commodore 64, Commodore 128, Commodore 16, Commodore Plus 4, Commodore, did I miss one? Maybe, SX64 character set and the original characters. Now, why didn't I write over every character on the screen? because I'm affecting character memory? The answer is I'm only stepping on zero through 31 here. If I wanna get do some damage and, 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 and you know take risks, be a risk taker, I'm gonna copy from, uh, let's see, zero to two. Let's see what that does. There you go. So you may notice here that all of these kind of sprung and jumped to this new character set. The capital A in Atari also sprung or jumped that new character set. Now I'm going to go from, let's see, that's zero, zero, one, two from zero. I'm going to go from four to um, three, zero, one, two, three, zero. Yeah, from four to three. This should do the lowercase. Enter, enter. No, oh, sorry. I'm, I'm looking at the at the Commodore at the 128 character set, which includes reverse field. So, well, and you can't do undo, right? I'm looking for the undo button so I can back up and do it correctly. But I think you get the idea. Um, let me do this just for fun. I'm gonna go back to let's make a Frankenstein character set. I'm gonna go back to 901439-10. No, sorry, 901447-447-10. Dot bin. And rerun this to see what happens. There you go. That cleaned it up. Now, unfortunately, this is not the thick Commodore character set, but I did clean up all of the lowercase characters. You can see that here. Um, so th that's a quick overview of how to mess with fonts. Um, a couple of mistakes along the way. But I think to get the idea of it, I'm going to um, annotate this as I've, I've just recorded this in one quick run. I'm up to what, almost 20 minutes now. I'm gonna annotate the video with some, some kind of drop-ins and some graphics so you can get a little bit more information. And what I'll also do is in the bottom of this, I'll put some of these commands and you can copy and paste them into your own machine um, and, and try it out for yourself. But uh, it is great fun um, to mess around with this and to find your own character set. I do have to give a shout out to, um, to Ernesto Contreras, who is making a character set editor for Phoenix. And it's probably gonna be done this week, I'm guessing. I have a funny feeling sometime during this weekend, this weekend being the 17th um, of June, he's gonna post um, kind of an update 
to his character set editor, which is based on a sprite editor, or at least some of that code. It's written in basic, and it's gonna be a, a, a really good thing to go ahead and make your own characters and, and you know, mess around with. Um, I should mention in closing that the ASCII character set of the, the normal ASCII character set of 128 characters, which includes the zero null up to 127, um, which is a non-printable delete key, um, is only kind of half of the set on the Phoenix, right? The Phoenix has 256 characters, as do most, I'll say, modern 8-bit um, computers. All of the ones we used in the 80s has a 256 character, but they didn't use them the same way, character set. Um, so you can go ahead and, um, and redefine the whole upper set without worrying too much about uh, stepping on any of the characters that are, that are required or needed, unless you want to. In a future video, I'm going to feature a small program that I wrote in machine language that lets you load and kind of change the personality of your computer to be a Commodore PET with the green screen, the thin font that you see here, a, um, a Commodore 64 type, which is this font with the blue and blue, uh, kind of a, nobody wants the blue on blue. Maybe I'll make it the white with on blue, uh, kind of like the SX64, uh, an Atari 400, 800 character set, um, and a, what was the fourth one? Oh, Apple and the Apple II character set. So look for that uh, posting as well. There'll probably be a separate video. Um, that's going to shut this down now. This is probably the longest video I've done so far. Um, hopefully this was useful to you and you've learned a few things. Again, keep your eyes peeled and open for a, um, a video specifically to talk about how to access the C1000 range, what each of the four pages are. But I at least wanted to introduce it here by telling you that POKE 1, 1 will, will make visible the character ROM. It's not a ROM, but it's in RAM. The character RAM section so you can overwrite it with your own fonts, etc.